tangled in her vines. Here's your look at the DC Collectibles DC Artist Alley Show Morassi. This is the Poison Ivy statue. Shomurasi is half Japanese and half Korean. She grew up in Europe and has been living in San Francisco, California for the past 10 plus years. This mix of cultures is reflected in her work, merging Asian, manga, and Western art influences with a personal dark twist. In her spare time, she works on her personal art. Her artwork has been exhibited at the German Film Museum in Frankfurt and the Louisiana Modern Art Museum in Denmark, among other places. First thing we're going to do is figure out how tall Poison Ivy stands. Then from there, we're going to extensively look at the statue. So stopping the Ultra Measuretron right there, the statue is a little smaller than the previously looked at Catwoman. Specifically by how much? Well, the figure statue, statue of Poison Ivy is six and a half inches. Catwoman was closer to being around a seven inch tall statue. And don't worry, we'll do comparisons in a second. And in that, the centimeter height for this Poison Ivy statue sits at 16.5, 16 and a half, 16 and a half. By the way, that is 16 and a half centimeters. Doing some comparisons and uh, wanted to showcase the different variants that was released in the Shomarasi setup. Here we have the iridescent version of Catwoman essentially from the same wave. The Poison Ivy here on the right is from the standard release of figures, which would have what I already discussed before in the review of Catwoman here, the colors of the white, the red, and the black, where the iridescent version of Catwoman, the very exclusive variant of her, was in iridescent purple. We'll say purple because that primarily that's the color when she seems to get out of the box. Of course, depending on the way that light hits it, light actually is hitting it right now, making her look a more metallic purple than anything else. Personally, I love when companies come out with variants of statues. Kind of gives them a fresh coat of paint, literally and figuratively, because if you picked up this one here in the exclusive or in the holiday colors, can very drastically change your perspective of what the statue looks like. What the statue also looks like, according to this card, is a mirror copy, one would admit. I think I've actually got it pretty close to the way it looks like in the card. And the color, the coloring of the card also depicts the reds and the blues. Kind of more blended together, although to be fair, it does recreate that well in the statue form as well. Down below, you've got Artist Alley, you've got the stamp printing. I don't know if this is actually of her signature. And then on the other side, uh, we get two cards, even though this card doesn't really have anything else other than DC Artist Alley featured on the bottom. Specifically, I wanted to have a look at a couple of different variations, like I said, of these statues. The statues are really be good, really beautifully sculpted. But again, perspective can change depending on how we look at them and how they're presented in different paints. Here, Poison Ivy, this is the standard release of Poison Ivy. So what you're seeing is a whole bunch of reds and a whole bunch of blacks kind of blended together. It actually even comes across like the red has been then kind of vanquished by the black that is sort of over, overwhelming everything. I love, absolutely love the face here on Poison Ivy. Very pale and 
very white in complexion here. Uh, a lot of the white actually carries down to other aspects of the statue as well. Kind of a mixing and marrying of two different kind of blacks and, and white contrasts of colors. Similar shapes will make their appearances in both white and the black coloring. I really, really like that. But I don't want to get too ahead of myself because I know certainly I will if I let it. Uh, really, again, want to look at her face sculpt. It is stunning. It is stunning. Easily... I know, to be fair, we haven't really looked at, we're going to be looking at a Poison Ivy, a, a Harley Quinn as well. I almost feel like I could easily just stop these three reviews by outright saying that my favorite of the three is the Poison Ivy. There's definitely more of a flow to this one, conveys more of a story than the straight out standing of Catwoman. And nothing taking away from, hopefully, uh, the upcoming review of Harley Quinn. Yes, I just gave that away. Um, I really do feel like this is my favorite of the three. Now, it is somewhat a more controversial series of colors. The one could e easily debate the fact that if you had picked up the holiday variants of these three statues, that Poison Ivy actually would be closer to her color scheme, that their hair would be all red. Her outfit would be primarily green. So here, it's actually, you're looking at it and jarring for a second. You have to kind of pinpoint what figure or what character the statue is based from. Clearly, by the indication of leaves and the mouths on the sides of the vines here, you can kind of pinpoint rather quickly that this is Poison Ivy. But certainly, the coloring on her would mislead you to believe that it could be another character. Love the flowing of the hair here, how it cascades down and drops down past the point of the vines. Love how that one strong vine grows up, and then you've got Poison Ivy sitting on top of that. This sort of coloring, the binary coloring of the blacks and the whites, really does work well here for Poison Ivy. Again, you've got the stark contrast of the bold black lining, say, for example, of her lips, the eyes, and the eyebrows against the backdrop of a really, really pale white. I can't even think of a paler, whiter white than what they've got going on right here. But amongst that, dancing, frolicking through the pale white complexion of Poison Ivy, you've got these dark black lines leaves and vines that are growing through it. Some shadowing has been added also like on the lower limbs. It's very much, obviously it's one or two colors, but it's very much like a strong contrast of colors. There's very little shading happening here in Poison Ivy. In fact, it's not actually until you get to the reds and the blacks that you start seeing the two colors starting to blend together. Love all these little raised leaves also that they've got on her. Even more the indication that this is Poison Ivy among any other character. The vines make their way around, sort of being the spinal cord for how the vine is working here. Outlining on the teeth, on the clawed, jawed areas here of the vine really helps to make this pop. I think if they had just left this off in its entirety, the teeth would almost be lost in the mix. So I'm glad that they put that in there. Um, I love this. I love this. It kind of looks like a curly mustache. It looks like something you would almost envision seeing from the world of Tim Burton. Maybe some could even argue the point that this is kind of a Tim Burton-inspired look for Poison Ivy. Um, it really does have such a great flow, such a great look to it. And even though I would say coloring-wise, other than just really the red, it's furthest from being Poison Ivy. The closest proximity to that, again, would be picking up the holiday variant, which I think you would get the true uh, Poison Ivy colors. But there is something charming about using just the red, just the black, and just the white. Marrying them together, giving us Poison Ivy. Immediately looking at it, you may not see Poison Ivy based on the colors. Of course, further inspection and closer inspection reveals it is Poison Ivy after all. The good news, at least, is for fans of Poison Ivy who wanted to pick up this statue for themselves, the standard release of Poison Ivy, like this one right here, is more frequently available in your local comic book stores. In fact, if you trek out to your store right now, it's a good chance that it may very well have this one in stock, along with the Catwoman and along with the Harley Quinn. These standard colors, and standard really being such the harsh word to describe it, nothing standard really about this. The coloring works really well for Poison Ivy, even though I, I sort of do miss the green. The green has been completely omitted from this statue. It's still enough Poison Ivy that I really just admire it more from the statue and its form than anything else. 
Yes, it could have probably used the green, maybe swapping the green out for the red, but the contrast of the red works really well with the black. Traditionally, you would look at this and think more the colors of Harley Quinn, and Harley Quinn herself also has the colorings of the red and the black in her standard release, but there's still something charming about this particular statue. I love the way the statue looks and very anxiously awaiting putting this one on my shelf. If, again, if you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself, unlike the Catwoman that we already had a look at, which was an exclusive, this one isn't an exclusive and should be readily available if you are interested in picking this one up for yourself. Today we were having a look at the DC collectibles. This was the DC artist Ali Shomarasi, and this was the standard variant, not even really would be a variant, the standard release of Poison Ivy in statue form. If you guys want to go back and have a look at some of my other statue reviews, specifically from DC Collectibles, there's a playlist. DC Collectibles statue should be fairly easy to find. And also, if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below. Yes, 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 we will also be having a look at Harley Quinn of the three-figure set. But I can tell you, though, Harley Quinn, much like Catwoman, is very much going to be different from a standard release. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys next time.